Okay, questions 6H3 through 6H5 in the second edition of Statistical Rethinking. Uh, I'll try to get through all of these in one video, but uh, if not, I might have to break it up into a few. Uh, the reason I, these should be lumped together is because uh, they all have to do with uh, with a data set in the rethinking package called data fox or it's <laughs> called foxes and to see it or to get it you get to use the data command um, and uh, what it is it's uh, it's a bunch of data collected on 116 foxes from 30 different groups of foxes okay and uh, all of the questions uh, 6H3 uh, through 6H5 are predicated on this DAG being correct. So I've also done a little bonus section um, at the very end of all of these that tries to assess this DAG. Uh, so without uh, further ado, let's get on with it. Uh, make sure that uh, before running this code, you've installed and loaded the rethinking package here. And here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, so the first thing uh, that we want to do is we want to find the, uh, the total causal influence, according to this DAG, of area on weight, okay? Uh, and so we're going to do that, um, but the, uh, the question advises us that we may want to uh, standardize the variables, and that's probably a very good idea, uh, and so that's what we're going to do. So I'm loading my data, uh, I'm calling it D, and I want to get a glimpse at the data with the head function. And also, I, if I call question mark foxes, I'll get a little spiel over on the side here that tells me about some of these variables that could be useful. Okay, So we see that, that foxes is just a, a data frame here um, with the variables that are listed in the DAG. Um, and uh, I'm going to close this just, just so we have more access to the screen. Uh, but we see that the group is, is really a factor. It's the ID of the group. We see that average food is how much food is available, but there's no units given. Group size is the number of fox. Area is, the, is how much territory that group lives on, I suspect. Um, although, again, there's no units there. And, there's, and then weight but the, for the foxes, the body weight of the foxes, but again, no units. Um, and so that uh, kind of uh, puts a little bit of friction in our interpretation, but that's okay. So I'm going to close this. Um, so now I'm going to standardize the variables, and I do that uh, by assigning a new variable to my data frame and, and just using the standardize function, which is a function in uh, the rethinking package. Um, so I've already ran that. Uh, and now we're going to uh, start building our uh, building a model to answer the, the total causal effect of area on weight. Um, and so uh, there's two paths from area to weight, okay? there's there's, uh, well, they're, they're mentioned here, so you can look at it, but there's area, food, weight, area, food, group size, weight, okay? But notice that both of these are causal paths, right? Uh, they're all forward arrows going there. So we don't need to control for any other variables. And so our regression can look just like this right here, okay? Um, if we were unsure about that, we could draw our DAG and then look at the adjustment sets for A as the exposure and W as the outcome. And so when I do that, um, you'll notice, uh, I've, oh, I've drawn the DAG again, but you'll notice that, that, that there's no adjustment sets. We get this empty set here, right? Uh, and that's just saying that we don't need to condition on anything to get the total effect of A on W, all right? So here's our first model. Uh, a, Okay, is the only thing that we're regressing weight on. W is the standardized weight variable. Okay, uh, okay, that's not good. Uh, let me pause this and see what I've done wrong. Ah, uh, what I did wrong was I needed to run this block again, and I did not. But anyway, uh, so I've ran the code, um, and we'll look at the posterior in a second, but the question su suggests that we should also do a prior predictive check before doing all of that. And so I'm going to do that before looking at the posterior, and the reason we should check our priors before looking at the posterior is because um, we could be tempted after seeing the posterior to nudge the priors in such a way that favors one of our pet hypotheses. So in order to do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create an object called prior and extract the prior. Okay? And then I'm just going to plot it here. Okay? Now I should say that these priors came from earlier in the chapter when a similar exercise was done on standardized variables. Um, and uh, so this, uh, there's almost, uh, I'm almost guaranteed that this prior will make sense, but let's just run it, okay? 
So I've plotted uh, some prior draws from, uh, from my prior distribution and also summarized my prior, okay? And so what I see here uh, is that as area moves up one standard deviation, okay, that weight does all sorts of things. And so if I look over here, here's my, here's my, uh, here's my uh, uh, estimates for area, okay? So it says that as area moves up one standard deviation, the average change to weight is basically zero, but it's on either side of zero to the tune of about 0.8 standard deviations, okay? And that's why you see this big spread over here, right? Um, so um, so it, this seems to be capturing, you know, what seems to be reasonable relationships. Again, there's no units on what area means or what weight is. Um, but roughly, it's, uh, it's saying that at, at about three standard deviations uh, of area, okay, um, that, that maybe that affects, that potentially that can affect the fox's weight by as much as about three kilograms. And that doesn't seem crazy to me. Um, the prior accepts things that extreme, and that seems okay to me. Um, I have no, uh, I should say I have no particular specialty in foxes, so um, different prior information uh, might yield a, a different interpretation of that. But anyway, um, so now I'm going to look at the posterior, okay? And uh, I notice that the, the coefficient for area uh, is right around zero, basically. It's basically zero, and the credibility interval it crosses zero and is about evenly distributed on either side. Okay, and so this suggests that uh, that there might not be an effect of area on uh, on weight. Okay, um, now uh, we're going to, as we move forward, we will kind of press that conclusion by looking at other models here. Okay, so the next model that we're going to look at is we're going to re regress weight, but this time on average food. Okay. Um, and so I'm using the same priors as I did before, um, and uh, I'm going to run this. Um, I'm not going to run a prior predictive check because this is going to come out to be about the same. Again, when there's about three deviation, standard deviations more of, of uh, food, then weight might go up as, many, uh, as much as, uh, as, much as uh, 0.8 standard deviation. So, and that seems reasonable to me. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to look at the posterior, okay? Uh, and again, I see that now the, uh, the coefficient for F for food uh, is again about zero and more or less evenly distributed around zero, okay? Um, so just to be clear here, what we have found is that the path that goes, that goes from the paths for A, which includes A, F, W, and AFSW, okay, as well as the paths from food to weight, which is F to W and F to S to W, are all zero, or bit around zero. Okay, that's a good estimate. Zero is a good estimate for what we have found so far. All right. Um, okay, so now we're going to go on to uh, the 6H5, uh, uh, and now we're going to try to find the total causal effect of... Uh, of uh, group size, which I've called S, the standardized version is being S here. All right. Uh, now, in our um, now there in this case, we have to condition on addition on an on an additional variable, right? So let me sorry for all the scrolling. Okay, but but here we are. Um, when we did A, we didn't ha we didn't have to control for anything because every path from A to W was a forward arrow, and similarly for F, every path from F to W was a forward arrow. But S has this backdoor path that goes through F. So to find the total causal effect of S on W, and I say total causal effect assuming that our DAG is correct, I have to condition on F, okay? So I'm gonna go down, go down. Um, okay, so here's my, uh, here's my uh, regression. I'm conditioned on F and S, all right? And now, what do I see? I see that B, that the coefficient for F is no longer zero. In fact, it's positive. And the coefficient for S is negative by about the same magnitude. Okay. So again, just referring back to our DAG, that is saying 
that this arrow is about 0.48 and this arrow is about negative 0.57, all right? So now with that information, we need to try to explain the results from the previous two regressions, okay? And so I'm, I'm pulling up the coefficients, the relevant coefficients for, the, for these three models, right? So remember in the first model, the coefficient for area was basically zero. In the second model, the coefficient for food was basically zero. But now when I include both food and size, uh, group size in the model, we see something different, right? We see that, that there's a positive association with food and weight and a negative association between uh, uh, group size and body weight, okay? And so, um, so what this suggests then is that, uh, that there is a masking effect taking place, right? That food is in fact affecting body weight, which we should hope it is doing, um, and so is group size, but they're doing opposite things to body weight, right? So even though food is having a positive effect on body weight, group size is having a negative effect on body weight of about the same size, right? Um, and so when we are not accounting for, uh, for that opposite effect, when we look at either F or A, area or food, we're recruiting both of these paths, right? We're recruiting both the positive and the negative path. And so it seems then that the coefficients for area and for food are zero unless we also account for group size, okay? Um, and so that is very uh, interesting. It starts to get at how difficult it can be to get at uh, understanding the causal associations between certain variables, right? Um, because it would have been completely legitimate to look at just area, the effect of area on body weight um, or a food on body weight, and we would have found basically a null finding but when we, when we start to embellish our model a little bit, we find something completely different, okay? And so if we didn't have S in our data set, then we would arrive at whatever conclusion we arrived at, uh, and it could have been faulty. Okay, so now I'm gonna to try to rush here through the bonus. Um, so all of these interpretations are based on the DAG that we have used as being uh, accurate, that, our, that the DAG was accurate. And so let me show the DAG here again. Okay, this is the DAG we've been using. Okay, so let's actually go about testing this DAG. Okay, so what, again, one way that we can test this is to look at the implied conditional independencies. And so here we see that A is independent of S given F, which makes sense, and that A is independent of W given F according to the DAG. And so we want to check these, and none of the models that we have used so far have checked either of these. Um, and so uh, we're going to come back to that here in a, uh, as we go through some models. Um, so let's, uh, the, but, the, but the other thing that we can do is we can try to get estimates of all of these arrows from A to F to F to S and, that, and so on and so forth. Okay? And so that's what we're going to do with these models. Just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through all of these models, but, uh, but go to the CoLab sheet uh, linked in the description. And you'll see that I'm, I'm trying to model each one of these different relationships, A to F, F to S, as well as A to S after controlling for F, okay? And that's gonna be the interesting one, okay? So I'm gonna run all of these, okay? And, I, and again, I have the, uh, the, the Pressy outputs here, okay? Um, so, uh, so in the first model from A to F, okay? From A to F, we see that there is a, uh, a positive association. So that suggests that, that A to F, area to food, uh, that there is a, a positive association there, okay? Um, in the second model, in the second model, I'm modeling A to S, okay? From, from area to size, uh, and there's a positive association there. And that makes sense because so far we think that area is affecting food and food is affecting group size, okay? And so that makes sense, okay? But now when I go to... Uh, the third model here. Mm, so, uh, it, oh, sorry, in the third model, we still see this positive effect. But now I'm, I'm going to look at uh, A to F to S, okay? So I, I have A in my model and S in my model, but I'm additionally controlling for F. And what do I see? I see that there is still a positive association between A and group size, but that should not be there according to our DAG, okay? And so that model, that's the, one, that's the model that's testing this uh, conditional independency, it seems to fail that. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna have to switch to another video here. Uh, so sorry about that, but I'll pick you up in the next one.